you've been wondering to yourself, like I have, what's Factor 3 all about? How the X-Men going to deal with it? How they going to fight it? Are we ever going to meet them? This is your issue, y'all. Let's get to it. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy back at you again with another Tommy Reads X-Men. Today, we're looking at X-Men number 37 from October 1967, written by Roy Thomas with art again by Ross Andrew. This one is called We the Jury. Side note right off the bat, if you haven't seen Jury Duty with Pauly Shore, go out and stream it, rent it, buy it, whatever. Quality Pauly Shore movie, but is there any other... I mean, he make all quality movies, right? Anyway, getting on to the X-Men. So, we start off, not at the mansion, not on the plane that the X-Men were taking last issue to go to Europe, take on Factor 3. We start with the head of Factor 3, so we think. Kind of a Dr. Clawish villain, thinking Inspector Gadget. Because last issue, all we saw was his hand. He's like, oh, get you, Gadget. And <laughs> instead, like a good coach, he's looking at game footage. And this game footage is basically the X-Men fighting the Juggernaut. We learn that he got the game footage from Papa Chuck's memories. Because he's been kidnapped about 18 weeks at this point. And, uh, you know, the X-Men are just now looking to get back Charles. So, we cut to the X-Men, who are actually on a plane, uh, you know, talking really loudly about Factor 3. And they're like, we gotta get, stop this Factor 3, guys. We're gonna get in there. We're gonna <clears throat> put some hands. Yeah, yeah, getting pumped up. And then the stewardess is like, oh, what's Factor 3? And they're like, up, 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 up. And then they wish they could mind wipe her, but they don't. And so, at that point... As if the X-Men were wishing something would happen to shut this lady up, the plane gets attacked by a Factor 3 drone. It takes a shot at the plane, misses, and the X-Men are like, well, what can we do to save these people? I know. Let's open the door to the plane. <laughs> so they open the door to the plane, go jumping out. They easily take out the drone and then realize, oh, we're falling from the sky. So... Angel tries to save everyone, but it's too much for him. Jean's using her telekinesis to kind of slow their trajectory, so to speak. And uh, we get a little box from Stan Lee. And he says, by the way, all this is happening in a second or two because they're moving so fast. Which I was just about to ask. I was asking myself reading it, like, how long are they going to fall? Because it's been like two, three pages of this. And... Uh, Angel finally unleashes his wings, and he's trying, like I said, just trying to slow people down. He's not doing a great job because he can't hold all four X-Men. So what ends up happening, they're getting close to falling. Cyclops is calling out orders and stuff because he's a good leader. And what ends up happening is Iceman goes full icy, and he creates a little ice slide for them to kind of sail to the ground. Now, I mean, just the impact from the slide would probably kill him. But our mutants are tough. We all know that. You know what I'm saying? And then, <laughs> while they're falling, they land on the ground, everything. Then they realize, oh, we should probably change into our costumes. <laughs> because this whole time when they were fighting, falling from the sky, the people on the plane, who they were protecting by leaving the door open, just saw them. Like, oh, here's these bunch of kids. This guy just shot lasers out of his eyes. And this one grew wings? And, like, I mean, granted, they're freaking out and stuff like that, but, like, they definitely saw their identities. You know what I'm saying? Now, the X-Men get to the ground, and they're changing into their costumes. And we see this because the head of Factor 3 is watching them change into their costumes via some weird-ass camera somewhere. Now, Mr. Boyer over there is, like, preparing for battle, but really, he just watches some kids change. What's up with that? Now, no sooner the X-Men change into their costumes than they're attacked by robot spiders. Now we saw this in the issue or two ago where Spider-Man fought a robot spider. And uh, you know, this time they're equipped with gas. So they, that's the gas coming out of the robot spider. He must have ate beans. Anyway, and so the robot spider, gas the X-Men, knock him out. Going straight to the wild, wild west. Yeah. It reminded me of Wild Wild West. So the X-Men are coming out of their unconsciousness after being gassed by the robot uh, spiders. And they're always kept in some dome. I guess, I mean, yeah, it looks cool, but it's never like a plain ass jail cell or something they can't get out of. It's always some weird dome where they can see all the goings on, especially here in Factor 3's lair. And what they find is uh, computer screens with different people that they, 
met in their different fights. They find the Blob, they find Unis the Untouchable, they find the Vanisher, and they find Mastermind. Yep, this is the first ever Zoom call in comics, y'all. <laughs> so they're all there and they're like, what are these jerks doing here? And then the Factor 3, we thought I thought he was the leader, but he's the number two in command. And we meet the leader later, but this guy comes up and he's like, X-Men, you are on trial for crimes against mutant kind. That's how he talks to me. And uh, they are like, what, a trial, what, what? And the judge is the head of Factor 3. Some white dude in a helmet, and he calls himself the Mutant Master. That's all we know about him so far, Mutant Master. So he's like, okay, let's have some testimony. And what we end up doing, or the X-Men end up doing, is seeing the adventures from... The, these are the villains from the first ten issues, roughly, of X-Men. And we see them testify uh, on, you know, Mutant Kind's behalf of all the things the X-Men's done to him. Like, Blob was just working at the circus when the X-Men started razzing him. Asked him to join the team, and then mind-wiped him when he said no. You know, Eunice, the untouchable, he probably got the worst, because the X-Men couldn't beat him until they built some weird depowering ray and threatened to starve him out. They said, you can't go near anything with this ray, not even food, unless you comply with what we want. <laughs> the Vanisher, I forgot. Mind-wipes, though, I'm pretty sure. And Mastermind uh, got turned into... Now, he admits, he admits that he got turned into a statue from an alien, but he never would have met that alien had he not been tussling with the X-Men, so really it's their fault. And plus, they were jerks to him as well. You know, the Juggernaut wasn't there, but, I mean, he was kept prisoner in a coma in the mansion by his, half br by his brother, Charles, and the X-Men are just cool with that? Like, come on now. The, and so they testify to this stuff, and I'm reading it like, man, the X-Men, these villains got a case. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they, got a, they got a case against, especially against Papa Chuck. Especially against Papa Chuck, but they accomplices. Papa Chuck, in case you were wondering, is right there front and center, but he's in a coma. Him and Banshee are kept in these little, like, tubes and stuff. And uh, they're, like, you know, doing their Mrs. Doubtfire impression of a hot dog, like. And they are kept there. The X-Men are thinking, how can we free him? How can we free ourselves? And then the, they don't get a chance to, rebu to for rebuttal, to, for the defense. And uh, the prosecution rests. And they're like, okay, well, we find you guilty. It's, it's an open and shut case, guys. Come on. Judge Judy would, could see this. And then the X-Men are like, what? Spare me this mockery of injustice. Shout out to Transformers, the movie where that line was from. If you know, you know. I forgot to add that... The Beast ends up calling Blob like, hey, chubby, which is just straight up bullying. You know what I mean? Like, it don't help their case that he's, like, literally putting the guy down while he's defending, while the guy's saying how awful the X-Men are. And Beast just illustrates this point because he's a jerk. As I said before, the X-Men are found guilty of their crimes against mutants for siding with humans against their own kind, the mutant race. And they are sentenced to death via the Oblivio Ray which I guess is going to Oblivio them. Let's go with that. And uh, so, like all good villains, <laughs> the Mutant Master, I use it in quotes because I feel like that's not his name, but that's all we got to go on so far. The Mutant Master, set, he sets up a trap. He puts, he puts the X-Men in this ray gun and it's supposed to blast them and kill them. And he doesn't stay there to watch it happen. <laughs> Aren't you even gonna watch them? They could get away. No, no, no. I'm going to leave them alone and not actually witness them dying. I'm just gonna assume it all went to plan. What? <laughs> he leaves, and then Cyclops, who's been a great leader this whole issue, is like, okay, Iceman, form icicles. And he's like, okay, why? And then she's like, he's like, Gene, move them with your mind. And she's like, okay, why? And he's like, don't question me. Just go with it. And so then Gene figures it out, but Iceman's still like, huh? And so Gene moves the icicles over the ray gun and short circuits it. How this lets the X-Men go free, I don't know. But <laughs> the X-Men get free and they start fighting some robot guards. Yeah, I had to get out of that sweater. I know I like to keep a certain professional aesthetic, but, you know, it's hot up in the studio. So we, we go on. <laughs> the Mutant Master 
finds out that the X-Men escaped. The X-Men are looking to, you know, break free, get Papa Chuck, get Banshee. And he's like, your resistance is futile. End of issue. <laughs> so it's a part, one part. We're going to get a second part later. Let me hit you with some final thoughts. All right, y'all. This was an 8 out of 10. It was an action-packed issue. Action-packed issue, finally. We find out something about Factor 3. We get to meet some of them. The X-Men get to razz them a little bit. Mostly robots, but you get what I'm saying. And uh, it was a nice callback with the old villains. The old villains from issues 1 through 10, who we seemingly forgot about in these past 20-something issues. And, uh, you know, they have a point. I'm just saying, like, the X-Men were jerks to him, especially some more than others, especially the Juggernaut. But, uh, you know, Charles got a receipt coming one day, and I won't be there to read it. <laughs> uh, this was a great recovery from last issue, which was one of the worst issues I've ever read of X-Men. And I'll leave a link in the description in case you didn't catch that issue. You can check that one out after you look at this. But yeah, 8 out of 10, solid issue. I can't wait to read the next one. If you like what you're seeing, or mildly entertained... Please like and subscribe down here. Spread the word about the channel. Anything you could do to help me promote the channel, I greatly appreciate it, and you'd be awesome for doing so. Hit that notification bell somewhere in the corner. I don't know exactly where it's at. If this is your first time watching Tommy Loves Stuff, the channel, or Tommy Reads X-Men, this series, thank you. Thank you for letting me entertain you. I appreciate you spending some of your valuable time letting me talk about nonsense. If this is your 50th time watching the channel, thank you, thank you. Spread the word. You're awesome. Later.